Okay, continuing our tour of our phylogeny, we've reached terrestrial vertebrates, and we'll look at amphibians first. So our first big branch here within terrestrial vertebrates is between amphibians and amniotes. So that's defined by having an amnion in the egg that allows the egg to develop in drier areas. Amphibians lacking the amnion have to lay their eggs in wet areas. So within amphibians, we have three groups. We have anurans, caudates, and gymnophionins. And this part of the phylogeny is not well resolved. We don't have really good data really specifically showing which of these is basal to the other two. So what are anurans? Anurans are frogs and toads, so they can be from the cute to the kind of homicidal. This big fat one is eating another one, right? That's legs from another anurin being swallowed up. This is a really interesting frog here. Those white dots on the back, those are eggs that have been laid in this male's back by the female. And this male will now be able to swim around for a while and keep those eggs safe from predators and move fresh water over the surface of the eggs to allow them to get oxygen while they're developing. So there's a number of really interesting adaptations that we see within anura. There's actually a species of toad that would incubate its eggs within its stomach to keep them safe again like this, right? The female would lay the eggs, the male would then um, take those eggs, basically swallow them, and then it actually had the ability to turn off the gastric juice pumps in the stomach so it wouldn't digest these eggs and basically incubate them in safety and then vomit up little babies when they hatch out of these eggs. And this is actually interesting because you may have, may have heard that knowledge of biodiversity can help get us practical results. It would be really nice to know how these toads turn off these gastric pumps and maybe we can design a anti-heartburn medicine or an anti-ulcer medicine. And so these toads are of great interest to people interested in that sort of thing. Unfortunately, what we did was we, by habitat destruction, we killed that toad off so we'll actually never get that product in addition to losing that really cool animal from the earth. Our second group of amphibians are caudates. So these are salamanders and newts. Salamanders and newts, they look a lot like lizards, but they have permeable skin, they don't have scales. And then some of these spend all their time in the water. So this is actually a salamander that lives in the water, has external gills. And some salamanders have even lost their lungs and they do all their respiration through the skin or through their gills. We also have limbless salamanders. This one has lost its hind limbs and a variety of other really interesting adaptations that arise within caudata. Our third group of amphibians are Sicilians, also called gymnophionins. So these are legless amphibians. They look kind of like snakes. They look kind of like earthworms. They have the lifestyle of earthworms. They live mostly in the ground, tunneling through the earth and eating the things they find there. But again, they're their own group of limbless organisms, right? This is an analogous trait to the limblessness in snakes, or in fact, the limblessness in some of these caudates as well. But if you're tunneling through the earth, having limbs can sometimes be a, a hindrance. So in fact, losing limbs can be an evolutionary adaptation and shouldn't be thought of as negative or bad. It's what has allowed them to thrive. And they're still around, which means they're doing just fine. So that's it for our three amphibians.